Olha o contra-ataque aí. Vem que vem o time avançando rápido pela linha de campo. Bola dominada no pé do camisa 10. Ele vai pra cima, passou pelo primeiro, passou pelo segundo. E bateu a grande área, vai chutar. Bateu, é gol! Que golaço, minha gente! A experiência de futebol mais autêntica já criada para os games. Junte-se no 5v5 Rush, a nova maneira de jogar com os amigos e leve seu clube para a vitória. E a Sports FC 25, dê tudo pelo clube. Já disponível. And now, Thriller Thursdays, on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. And now, episode 242. The chase is on. <laughs> Are you sure it's Lister? I'm positive. That's my shuttlecraft. I have a hidden transponder on it for this very reason. Agent Simon and Jaffer are returning. We'll let you know when we can depart. It doesn't matter when you depart. You'll never catch them. Don't be so sure about that. You heard Captain Nate. He has a tracker on board. That just means he can find his shuttle once we reach Titan IV. But Lister and Ursula will be long gone by then. We're not worried about that. Once we reach Titan IV, we'll swap out the ship we're getting here and then pick up the Mercury shuttle. I hear a clock ticking. Yes, ticking away precious time. As I was saying, we'll pick up the shuttle, get back to the Mercury and head for Titan IV. And from there, we'll look for the Potomac. And while you're looking, they are getting farther and farther away. Not really. Lister has a circuit board which he is obsessed about planning into his own brain. He'll need special care. There's no way that Ursula could pilot the Potomac by herself. Meaning he has to hustle up a crew for the return ship to the Boulder Bar system. And given the fact that there hasn't seemed to be any interest in joining Rage, I don't think they'll have an easy time finding any takers. I wouldn't count on that. There are always crews looking for a ride back to Boldebar. Free passage on a ship like the Potomac would be hard to pass up. First of all, General, you're assuming that there are qualified crew members wanting a free ride. Most crew members have a ship. I doubt they'd want to give up any earned wages to hop a ride back to Boldebar. Gabby and I can attest to that. When we first landed on Cali, we were pretending to be looking for crew members. There weren't many at all. Yeah, look what happened. We ended up with these two. Hey, I think we worked out. Yeah, we even became deputized bounty hunters. Speaking of bounty hunters, here comes Joffre now. I hope they were able to find a shuttle for us. Lister is getting farther away as we speak. Tick tock. Tick tock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the sound of your bounty getting away. Too bad for you. They'll be there a while. We'll have plenty of time to track them down. You're forgetting that they're going to Titan IV in a shuttlecraft. They cannot run the Mercury. We'll catch them. Like you said to me once, let me fall asleep so we can both have the same dream. We were very lucky. We now have a shuttle to take us to the Mercury. Originally, the officer we spoke to said that they were going to take us up on the Mercury. But there were too many of us. It holds a crew of ten plus the pilot. So we have full use of the shuttle. We'll leave it at the Titan City Aerodrome. The IDF will ferry it back here later. Has there been any word on Lister? Yes, sir. Nate Rajo that he detected his shuttle departing for Titan IV. And he was sure it was Lister. He said there was a hidden transponder on board and he picked up its signal. And then we shouldn't have any problem tracking them. We're certainly not going to be able to track them standing here. Let's go, everyone. Chop, chop. Well, I've narrowed my pile down to one possible suspect. I have two. And I have one. So let's go through these. 
I have Major Shively. He graduated West Point three years after Bishop. They were stationed together in Darmstadt, Germany for two years. Both were staff members in the same battalion. No one else I uh, have uh, crossed paths with either Bishop or Korski. Well, my guy sounds like yours. He graduated West Point two years after Bishop and was TDY with Korski at Fort Greg Adams for an environmental management course. Fort what? Fort Lee, Jimbo, get with the times. Uh, no, thank you. My two have similar histories. Major Monroe was three years after Korski and served with him. And for your benefit, Jim, at Fort Eustis. My second guy is Major Obarski. He graduated with Monroe and was in Fort Eustis with both Monroe and Korski, but more importantly, Obarski was with Korski at Fort Drum in Upper New York State during the Great Northeast Blackout. I'd say Obarski gets to go to the head of the class. Fort Drum is home of the 10th Light Infantry Division, and Jim, you'll be happy to hear that its name hasn't been changed, but these guys aren't infantry. Yeah, I was TDY that wants to evaluate National Guard unit for New York City. <laughs> that was interesting. One company was made up of policemen, the other were all firefighters. Have you been stationed at every army post in America? I did, I got around. Were they PCS together or TDY? TDY in August as second lieutenants. Okay, so they were there together during the Great Northeast Blackout. That's not the kicker. Bishop was at an army recruiting station in Akron during that time. So, what's so special about that? The blackout originated at an energy company's computer in Akron, Ohio. Ah, and Sam bragged that he was part of the blackout attack. So we can directly tie all three together. I think we have a winner. Good work, Scarlett. I don't think we should describe these other three just yet, but we definitely need to give Obosky here top priority. I'll start digging into his past. Based on what we learned so far, I'd say you need to look for some event in his past like you found with Leonard and Korski. And like Korski, he may have changed his name. I'm on it. I suppose we could start on our two guys, uh, and whoever finishes first can take Scarlet's second suspect. I believe we're finally getting close, Jim. I believe we're getting close. I think that about covers everything we consider as a high-value target. That's a lot of push pins. It kind of reminds me of Pinhead. Yeah, nice movie reference there, Kelly. You're right, that doesn't narrow things down much. So which one of these do you think is the most vital? For rage or our fictitious cartel attack? Let's just stick with rage. Well, I like our original choice. The dual hubs of Cyrus 2 and 3 and Greater Greens Point. These three will pretty much cripple all the other pins you've got on the board. I tend to agree with you, Kelly. The shipping ports, the railheads, the trucking companies all rely on the internet to operate efficiently. Just got a text from Jim. They've been going through the records of the assignment officers at the Pentagon, and they found a good candidate. Someone they could tie in with Korsky or Bishop? Yes, perhaps even both of them. They were all connected to each other during the Northeast blackout. What's the name? I'll pass that bit of information on to Sam. The name is Obarski. They were in school together at Fort Drum, New York. Okay, and why is that significant? Because the same August Bishop was in Akron, Ohio, the source of the Northeast blackout. Ah, and Korski has bragged about being part of that mission. I'll get this right to him. Maybe Obarski's name will pop up. Little by little, this puzzle is starting to come together. Yeah, well, this has been like putting together a thousand-piece puzzle with a few pieces missing. I think we're starting to fill in a lot of those missing pieces. We need to find everything we can on this Obarski character. They found three other assignment officers who served with Korski at one point. Barnes said they're investigating them, too. I agree with their assessment that this Obarski guy is the one we need to concentrate on. I got a text from Sam. He says he'll let us know if Obarski's name comes up or anything about Fort Drum. Well, this is interesting. What is? I've been looking at internal memos from the Cyrus-based exchange hubs. What did you find? Both Cyrus 2 and 3 are holding training seminars in a couple of days. Really now? Bishop had extended Sam for two days. And one of the main targets is having a training seminar in two days. 
Which means they won't be fully manned. Making them a prime target for a cyber attack. And this is the dilemma we talked about. Do we warn them or not? Realistically, we can't. What agency is telling them and what is the source of our information? They could receive an anonymous tip, maybe? Maybe, but I'm sure they get crank calls a lot. Might be worth a try. How about we get a crank call? From whom and who exactly is we? You or Kelly could call our crime line and say you heard that there is going to be a cyber attack in two days. It should get logged on our incident report. Which means you'd see it. And I could assign you to investigate. Well, that sounds pretty good. But how is that different from us just going out there and talking to them? Because we need to address the issue in an official capacity. If it leads to an arrest, we already have a representative from Homeland Security here, and Kate can take over. As a matter of national security, of course. Well... There are still a couple payphones around Houston. I think I can take one of you there and you make the call. I think that's a plan. See, isn't one of those phones close to that that pit barbecue place? We could stop and get some good Texas beef. Oh no, it's happening. Yep, he's been hanging around Sam too long. We're packed in here like sardines. I was wondering what that smell was. Ha ha, very funny there, Marco. (laughs) Don't quit your day job. We are definitely at maximum capacity. If you got off Bounty Hunter, we could at least get three more people on here. Is everyone a comedian today? Maybe it's because we think these two are a joke. I know you aren't talking about us. What do you think, Tam? Can I abstain? No. Okay, sure. I think the guard is the funniest. He's big and scary and the kind you wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley. She understands me. But as soon as he gets out on that river monster, he cries like a baby. I think (laughs) she does understand you. Hey, how about I stop and let you all out and walk? I'm trying to fly here, guys. We're getting close to docking. Gabby is right. It's awfully crowded in here. The last thing we need is for everybody sniping at each other. After we dock, Slane, you and Tam start repairs on the landing gear. Right. Tam, did you bring the servo unit? Me? I thought you had it. What? Please don't tell me you left it. (laughs) Sorry, but everyone else was making a joke. I thought I'd just join the party. Don't worry, I have it. You almost gave me heart failure. Yeah, I was about to say, if that were true, you'd be the one getting out and bloody walking. I have a great mind to have them do that now. How did we ever lose the war to these people? All right, everyone, make sure your seatbelts are tightly fastened. We're approaching the Mercury. Now, once we're on board, Joe Mac, you and Marco secure our guests in the brig. It would be my pleasure. Well, we'll make sure you have the finest accommodations available. And I'm sure we'll have the finest room service available, right? Without a doubt. The Mercury is equipped for the best food available with all the accoutrements you can imagine. Really? I would expect only the best. Now, like a skipper said, all you can imagine. Because that's what you'll be doing. Imagining. <laughs> Show radar contact. Prepare to attach to the cargo bay ramp. Lowering ramp. I have visual contact. Coming about for straight and approach. Yeah. I do not have telemetry control for this model shuttle. You will have to make a manual approach. Copy that. Gabby, this is a difficult approach. Have you done many of these? No, this will be my first. Seriously? Your first? No, I do them all the time. Everyone was being a comedian, so I thought I'd add my two cents. Everyone make sure you're buckled in tightly. On course. Rate of closure is nominal. Switching to air assist propulsion. Engines going offline. Shut down. Confirmed. Closure rate. Nominal. On course. Activating docking lights. I have confirmation on docking lights. Stand by for shuttle capture. Five, four, three, two, one. Capture confirmed. Shutting down all systems. Pressurizing A area and beginning gravity rotation. I 
couldn't have done a better job myself. Why does that not surprise me? I suppose you could have done better. With my eyes closed. Oh yeah, just like when you fight the river monsters. <laughs> Ah, good one, Slime. Do you think we have any chance of catching Lister and Ursula? I'm not worried about catching them before we get to Titan IV. He needs surgery and he also needs to find a crew. You seem sure that he won't be able to find a crew in Tyrannus. You might be surprised, Bounty Hunter. There are a lot of rage sympathizers throughout the city. And I'm saying that it will take time to find them and then convincing them to join as his crew. Convincing them to join is not as hard as you think. I've done it many times. And what do you do if they refuse to join? They don't. Pressurization is complete. Rotation complete. You now have one atmosphere pressure and one G gravity. You are cleared for egress. Roger. Cleared for egress. Main power bus off. Okay, everybody. Last stop. Let's go. Joe Mac, you and Marco can escort our guests to the brig, and then meet us back up on the bridge. All right, you two. Let's go. You are making a huge mistake. Yeah, we are. We should have made you get out and walk here. Now move it! I'm not sure we have everything we need here. Is there another toolkit on the ship? If I recall correctly, there's a tool locker in Bay 3 next to the access panel for the landing gear. I'm surprised you knew that, Lenora. Now let's head up to the bridge. Hopefully Nate will have an update for us. Good morning, Sam. Glad you could make it. Well, I finished my inspection, and I don't have any place else to go. Unless there's a breakfast in my future. Oh, we'll definitely do that. Close the door. Have a seat. Sounds like this isn't just a social call. Is Korski still out? He's on his way to the Department of Defense building in Houston. His cover is that he's going for an update and refresher course on asset management. That wouldn't be your target, would it? No, don't worry. There are no what you might call hard targets. Ah, so nothing is going to go boom. He's going to meet the one undercover rage agent we have there to get access to their mainframe. So he'll be initiating the cyber attack from there. Well, that's pretty cool, but why are you here? I thought you needed me in San Antonio for the diversion. I do. I'll be departing later this morning. I'll be doing a high school presentation for the recruiters there. After that, we'll get down to business. Sounds like we're getting close. Now, what am I supposed to do? Basically, I need your eyes on our San Antonio target. Sounds easy enough. Where exactly am I going? Our target in Houston is the Cyrus 2 and Cyrus 3 Internet Exchange Hubs. Your target of interest here is Cyrus 1. I have a room for you on the upper floor of the Hilton San Antonio. The Hilton? Wow, you guys go first class, don't you? Your room is on the top floor, giving you a clear view of the San Antonio data center. You'll have a laptop that'll be using the data center's feed. I see. So I'll be able to tell if your attack was successful. But couldn't you do that from Houston? Yes, but we'll be monitoring Cyrus 2 and 3. What we really need you for is to have eyes on that building itself. San Antonio Fire Station 45 is right across the street. We're hoping to overload the system with a virus. It'll shut down all electrical systems, which should trigger emergency backup generators and possibly set off alarms. I get it. So you would want to know if the fire station responds. Not only the fire station, but police and hopefully government vehicles. You think that the IDF will show, don't you? That's our hope. We want the IDF to concentrate its forces on Cyrus 1 while we take out Cyrus 2 and 3 and any other target of opportunity. This could be a glorious day for rage. But more importantly... A glorious day for me. I'm really glad to see you guys. Me too. No offense, Captain, but I was getting a little tired looking at his face. No offense taken. The feeling's mutual. Looks like we've arrived just in time. What's the latest you have on Lister's shuttle? After 30 standard minutes, we lost contact. 
Seems our shuttle's got pretty good speed. That's exactly why they stole it. Do you know how much faster the Mercury is than your shuttle? Estimating the head start they have in our top speed, we should intercept them about the time we reach orbit. Then we should be able to arrest them easily. We can just follow them to the ground. That's what I'm hoping for. Knowing Lister, I wouldn't count on that. That shuttle can go places this big ship can't. We can always shoot them down. Shoot them down? Destroy the skipper's shuttle? Really? No, but if Captain Nate has good insurance on his shuttle... You can forget that idea. Not gonna happen. Did we miss anything? Hey, if Captain Nate has insurance on his shuttle, we can shoot Lister and Ursula down and be done with it. Really? I kinda like that idea. We can just pick up the pieces and head back to Baldemar. No one is shooting anything. We're going to track them. Nate estimates we'll catch up as soon as we enter orbit. Then we can send Gabby in the shuttle. She can run them down and take out both of them like she did on Latumus. Keep trying, Joe Mac. You'll eventually say something funny. Did you have any trouble with Hanukkah and his guard? Well, they whinged about the cell and demanded to be treated better. Though we could give them the same accommodations that they gave me. We could strap them to an operating table with bright lights overhead. Yeah, that sounds appropriate enough. I'm sure they'll be fine. We need to turn our attention to more pressing matters. Agent Simon is right. Lister and Ursula will most certainly be on the move once they land. We need to devise a plan on how we intend to pursue them. I think it's pretty obvious that we deploy the shuttle once we enter Titan IV's atmosphere. Captain Tam and I could pursue. Like you pointed out, the shuttle is more agile and can go where the Mercury can't. I think Marco and I should go with you too. Yeah, I agree. That would split us up more evenly. I'll take that into consideration. We need to make sure that he doesn't elude us once he lands on Titan IV. I believe Gabby, Tam, Joe Mac and Marco would make a good team. Speaking of Tam, is there any word on the repairs of the Mercury's landing gear? Georgia, do you have a status report on the landing gear repairs? Stand by. Repairs appear to be near completion. They are currently performing a hydraulic pressure test. Thank you. Please notify when the repairs have been completed. Understood, Captain Nate. I hope their repairs work. I hate the thought of staying in orbit again while repairs are being made. Even worse, waiting for another replacement part if this one didn't work. I'm sure you can find something to occupy yourself with up here. I understand Captain Nate has a lot of movies in his library. I could offer you some suggestions. I don't know if I'd do that, Liam. Why not? I could use something to pass the time up here. Well, because she only likes to watch bloody horror films. Captain Nate, I have information you need to know. Have they completed the landing gear repairs? That is not the information I have. My sensors have detected the shuttle you wanted me to track. How is that possible? We're not even halfway to Titan IV yet. The shuttle is drifting. I am not detecting. Any life forms on board? Looks like we got our own horror movie in the making. Is this the end of Lister and Ursula? What would the crew of the Mercury find when they reach the shuttle? Now that Sam knows Bishop's target, will he be able to get word to Tracy's team in time to stop him? Will Barnes find the Pentagon Mole? Find out in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles Abandoned Ship.